you know, Mauritius and the People's Republic of China established diplomatic ties since the independence of Mauritius. This decision, as I said earlier, was taken at a time when many conspired to deny the Chinese people one-fifth of humanity, to deny them the rightful say in world affairs. Sir Siu Saga also the justness of the Chinese cause. He subscribed fully, as we do, to a one-China policy. And it was the emergence of independent states in Africa that decisively, decisively tilted the balance in favor of the People's Republic of China. You know, today when I see some in the West criticize China's policy towards Africa, they forget the link between us and the People's Republic of China. Today, China is one of the most important trade and investment partners in, of Mauritius. It is our fourth trading partner and ranks second in terms of imports. Trade increased by almost 12% last year. And FDI increased from 78 million rupees in 2008 to reach 171 million in the first half of this year. This relationship is set to further strengthen with the implementation of this project. And I would like to seize this opportunity to once again express our deep appreciation to the government of the People's Republic of China for their unflinching support to the development of our country since independence. The footprint of the Chinese government and its people is visible on the major infrastructure projects implemented in Mauritius. The setting up of this zone will play an important role in developing relationships between our private sectors. The private sector has always been the engine of wealth creation and economic growth. And my government has created the conditions for its development and its democratization, ensuring more competition. Promoting inclusive economic growth that fosters equity is a priority for my government. We are committed to substantially improve the standard of living of each Mauritian, to develop our human capital and promote entrepreneurship, to empower our people, especially the women and the youth of our country, and to preserve our environment. In the last few years, we have been faced with an unusually adverse international economic environment and multiple challenges in the wake of globalization. We have been coping quite well and adapting as best as we can when the final global financial crisis hit the world. It has been a severe setback. You know, I can't help saying it. Some people in this country don't even know that there has been a global recession from the way they speak. You would have thought they don't live on this planet. However, the severity of this recession has been mitigated by the reforms we had undertaken since assuming office. The resilience we have built in our economy has spared us from a major catastrophe. We have weathered the worst of the crisis relatively unscathed. In the process, the country has grown in confidence. We have created a spirit of healthy partnership between the government and the private sector, and we are now well poised to take advantage of the recovery. Going forward, further opening up our economy to attract foreign direct investment will continue to be an important part of our strategy. And as the world recovers, FDI flows will become more fluid. We hope the setting up of this zone will induce others to take a closer look at Mauritius, the first country in Africa to figure in the top 20 economies according to the World Bank Ease of Doing Business Index in 2010. Mauritius now ranks 17th out of 183 economies classified. This already is an improvement of seven places compared to last year. And this at a time when most of the countries are actually actively trying to reform their economies. It may be recalled that Two years ago, we ranked 49th in the world. 
I won't tell you what our ranking was five years ago. Whether it is in the Global Competitiveness Report or the Economic Freedom Index, Mauritius has been improving its ranking considerably. And this did not happen by itself. These improvements were not achieved fortuitously. The reforms we are undertaking are meticulously thought out and implemented assiduously. I can tell you when budget time comes, and I hope, and I know my colleague, the Vice Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, won't mind my saying it. Practically for the month before the budget, every day, for a few hours, we discuss about the measures that we're going to take for the budget. It did not happen like this. Mauritius has long enjoyed political stability, constitutional continuity, and an independent judiciary. However, our restricted local market, our size, our geographic position has been a deterrent to FDI. This constraint has been overcome by our persistent diplomatic action. Goods manufactured in Mauritius now have preferential access to most of sub-Saharan Africa through our membership of the common membership to the common market for Eastern and Southern Africa, COMESA, the Southern African Development Community, SADC, to the United States of America and the AGUA, and to the European Union under the Economic Partnership Agreement. A preferential trade agreement with Pakistan came into force in November 2007, and a comprehensive co cooperation and partnership agreement with India will soon be finalized. Mauritius now has all the attributes of a manufacturing and value addition platform. Today, the Mauritius Genfi Economic and Trade Cooperation Zone project takes an important stride towards realization. An investment of this magnitude is not undertaken lightly or in haste. Both the governments of the People's Republic of China and Mauritius have given the full support for this implementation. The decision, I can tell you, was taken was in His Excellency the Chinese Premier Wen Jiabao and myself discussed the matter during my visit to China in 2006 and later on together with His Excellency President Hu Jintao. And the final project was sealed during His Excellency President Hu Jintao's visit to Mauritius earlier this year. Because let's not forget, in the meantime, the recession hit the world. And I know that His Excellency President Hu Jintao personally intervened to ensure that this project becomes a reality. I also know that thanks to him, the China-Africa Development Fund, which was set up during the China-Africa Forum in 2006, will also be investing in this project. This is a clear signal, as clear as it can be, an evidence of the mutual confidence that exists between us as it does between our peoples. I take this opportunity to thank the promoters for keeping faith in Mauritius, for believing in our potential, and for contributing in our economic development. I wish them success. Long live the People's Republic of China and Mauritius. Xie xie.